Today, we're talking about five of the craziest things ever to happen during a Major League Baseball game. Umpires took away George Brett's home run. Harvey Haddock pitched 12 perfect innings and lost. The Texas Rangers scored 30 runs in a single game. And who can forget the Queen of England throwing out the first pitch. Okay, the last thing did not happen, but Tommy Lasorda did get Yuppie, the Montreal Expos mascot, ejected from a game in 1989. This video is a continuation of one I made a few months back, so if you like part two, you might like part one as well. Okay, number five, the Rangers score 30. On August 22, 2007, the Texas Rangers faced the Baltimore Orioles in the first game of a doubleheader at Camden Yards. Through the first five innings, it was an ordinary contest, five to three in favor of the Rangers. Then it got crazy. The Rangers scored nine runs in the sixth, ten runs in the eighth, and six runs in the ninth for a total of 30 runs. Jared Salamakia and Ramon Vasquez drove in seven runs apiece. Every Ranger got a hit, one got five, two got four. The Orioles simply could not stop the offensive onslaught. Now the last time a Major League team scored 30 runs or more was Cap Anson's Chicago Colts in 1897, 110 years earlier. Number four, the Pine Tar Incident. On July 24th, 1983, George Brett hit a two-run home run in the top of the ninth inning, which put the Kansas City Royals ahead of the New York Yankees. Teammates congratulated Brett for the big hit, and then things got interesting. Yankees manager Billy Martin argued that Brett had used an illegal bat. According to the rules of Major League Baseball, bats are not to have more than 18 inches of pine tar uh, on their handles. The umpire crew conferenced to measure the bat's pine tar from its end, and then home plate umpire Tim McClellan ruled that George Brett had made the third and final out. Game over. The Royals had lost and the Yankees had won. Famously, Brett charged from the dugout looking like a wild animal, veins popping totally livid. What made the game so bizarre is that Major League Baseball overturned the ruling. The Yankees fought that ruling, and eventually the Supreme Court of New York ruled that the two American League teams would have to finish things from where they left off. And so, to an empty stadium, the Yankees and Royals played a half inning. Pitcher Dan Quisenberry eventually retired the Yankees in order, 1-2-3, and the game went down as a Yankees loss, not a win. Such a thing hasn't happened since. Number 3, Tencent Beer Night at Cleveland Stadium. It had nudity, firecrackers, and a full-blown riot in the ninth inning. But to understand what happened on June 4, 1974 requires knowledge of two things. First, the Cleveland Indians did not properly limit the number of beer purchases. Second, the Texas Rangers were visiting and the two teams had bad blood. One week earlier, Indians reliever Milt Wilcox had intentionally plunked Rangers third baseman Lenny Randall. In retaliation, the wily Randall did not charge the mound, he laid down a perfect bunt up the first base line and then plowed into Wilcox from the base path. The benches cleared, and Cleveland's press talked up the event. That's what happened in advance of Tencent Beer Night. So you've got a large, ginned-up crowd ready to drink cheap beer and boo the Rangers at Cleveland Stadium. This was not to be a normal night. During the second inning, a woman got onto the field and exposed her breasts. Two men jumped over the outfield wall and mooned the crowd in the fifth. Fireworks popped off all night. That carnivalesque atmosphere turned ugly in the late innings as the crowd was much more intoxicated and more dangerous. When two men ran onto the field in the ninth inning and tried to steal the cap of Rangers right fielder Jeff Burroughs, Burroughs kicked one and then stumbled to the ground. Well, Texas players charged out of the dugout to defend their teammate they thought was being attacked. As they rushed into the outfield, so too did hundreds of drunk fans. The resulting riot saw metal chairs tossed at heads, fistfights, and 20 police patrol cars arriving to the chaos. Twelve arrests were made, and Cleveland had to forfeit the game. Number two, 12 perfect innings. Perfection is rare, and just 23 perfect games have occurred in baseball history. Although Harvey Haddock of the Pittsburgh Pirates threw 12 perfect innings and lost. I'll repeat that. He retired 36 consecutive hitters in 1959 and then lost the game. Opposing pitcher Lou Burdett of the Milwaukee Braves held the Pirates scoreless for 13 frames, no small feat, and when the Braves finally scored in the 13th inning, Harvey Haddix walked off the field a loser despite an unparalleled performance. Number 1, the 1912 Players' Strike. 
On May 17, 1912, the Detroit Tigers refused to take the field because American League organizer and president Van Johnson had suspended their teammate Ty Cobb indefinitely. The aggressive, hot-tempered Cobb had severely beaten up a fan for taunting him with relentless abuse. Cobb's teammates thought the punishment unjust and voted to walk off the field if Johnson did not rescind the suspension, which he wouldn't do. Well, Tigers owner Frank Navin understood the seriousness of the player's threat and ordered manager Huey Jennings to prepare an alternate team for an upcoming game against the Philadelphia Athletics. With great haste, Jennings recruited two amateur boxers, known in Philly, a group of semi-pro players, two of whom had played at Georgetown University, and part of the Tigers coaching staff. After the home plate umpire shouted, play ball, Ty Cobb walked out to center field, but the umpires waved him off due to the suspension. Well, as a result, the Detroit Tigers walked off too. And at this point, Jennings' replacement players signed one-day contracts and took the field with pitcher Alan Travers on the mound. Travers, a future Jesuit priest, would allow 24 runs to Connie Mack's defending champions. The player strike was big news, and while Ty Cobb successfully convinced his teammates not to, do, not to do it again, it showed that they were willing to go to bat for the Georgia Peach. Crazy things happen all the time in baseball. Ray Codwell got struck by lightning in Cleveland, 3 foot 7 inch Eddie Goodell went to bat for the St. Louis Browns, and who can forget the shortstop run over by a car and then mauled by a tiger? Okay, that last thing didn't happen, but Tommy Lasorda did beat up the Philly Fanatic. Let me know what you think of uh, my list in the comments, and thanks for watching.